Tonight, COVID isolation rules axed for close contacts. Health experts warning it's too soon to drop restrictions. A hot air balloon scrapes buildings and trees in a terrifying emergency touchdown. Oh, oh. A 15-year-old girl killed in a school holiday tragedy in Melbourne southeast. China seals a security deal that could put troops on our doorstep. And one-on-one -on -one with Trent Cochin for the latest on Dustin Martin's future with the Tigers. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. Victoria is set to dump close contact isolation rules in a major revamp of COVID restrictions. The overhaul also means the end of the vaccinated economy and QR check-ins. Business says the change will ease staff shortages, but health experts fear it's too much too soon. On a day Victoria had 10,000 COVID cases, the rules are coming off. With these vaccination levels, We've got enough inbuilt protection as a community that um, further restrictions are really not uh, proportionate uh, or uh, necessary. But not everyone is happy. They've given up on transmission of COVID. They've decided that there's no need to control transmission of COVID. Um, and that's unfortunate. From 11.59pm on Friday, close contacts won't have to quarantine, but they will have to keep their masks on indoors and they'll need to complete five rat tests during the week. If they stay negative, they'll be allowed to leave their house, but should avoid sensitive settings. We're pretty confident that continued high rates of vaccination have got us this far and um, will get us uh, safely through the winter. It will allow us to get back to um, a better normal, uh, help keep, it, keep us safe at home, uh, at school and at work. The move to scrap isolation rules for close contacts means staff shortages for businesses should ease. The onus of COVID recovery from here is with everybody. You know, businesses will absolutely play their port, part. They've taken the baton today and, and will accelerate into recovery. Mask rules are also being wound back, no longer needed in primary schools or early childhood settings. Workers in hospitality and retail can also breathe easy. When we're running around, it's hot, it's sweaty, um, and it's just it's a border between us and the customers, which we don't want. We want the, the personal touch from PAs, and um, yeah, we, we get to have that now. The vaccinated economy will also end, and that means you won't have to check in at any venue. So happy, um, just meaning that we can open more doors as well and not have to have the staff checking. Customers can come straight in, grab a pint of beer and sit down and enjoy their, enjoy their time. You'll still need a mask while travelling on public transport, inside airports and on planes, and also if you're visiting a hospital or aged care facility. It's a bit like we're teenagers and we're finally being given the keys to the car and it's really important that all of us do our bit so we don't crash the car. Vaccine mandates will remain in place for education, construction, healthcare and emergency services. Some experts say while rules shouldn't remain in place forever, the timing of today's announcement is wrong. And some of it does make sense when numbers are down, but may not make so much sense when numbers are so high. You, you can't trust what this government is saying. They're easing it now, but uh, you cannot trust the government not to put more restrictions in place and lock us down again. What's around the corner, we'll continue to monitor that and like always, factor in the public health advice. Chanel Vella, 7 News. A hot air balloon has hit two buildings and trees with 13 passengers on board as it came in for an early morning emergency landing at Elwood. It ended with a terrifying touchdown in the front yard of an apartment building. At the critical moment, the safety of Elwood Beach was in sight but painfully out of reach. Everyone on board braced for impact. Oh, Yeah. Should we get out? 13 passengers and the pilot were able to walk away. You guys okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. The stricken balloon had plunged through trees and dodged power lines before landing on an apartment building on Tuna Grove. We knew we were aiming for the beach, so 
Yeah. Hoping for a swim, but we've got a uh, bunch of trees instead. Apartments were blanketed by the balloon. What's happening? What the f is this? Trees and buildings became hazards as the balloon lost altitude over St Kilda and Elwood. Oh. At one stage, passengers waved away a tradie working on a roof. This was his view of the balloon falling in his direction. What the f He got away just in time. It just crashed right on top of my head, so yeah, I was scared to death. Passengers took the full force of the big hit. The pilot knew they were in trouble shortly after the balloon took off from Parkville. He noticed a valve was unable to close, releasing hot air. We didn't run out of fuel, but I didn't have enough fuel to use the three burners properly to, to continue up in the air. This had been the maiden flight for this balloon. The company had received it 10 days ago and it carried out a test inflation before this morning's flight. The pilot tested negative to alcohol and was praised by the passengers. The Transport Safety Bureau will investigate the crash. Cameron Bow, 7 News. A 15-year-old girl has been killed in a school holiday tragedy. Emma O'Sullivan has the details and Emma, she was walking with friends on the Mornington Peninsula. Mitch, this is a very sad case. The girl died at the scene after being hit by a car at Baxter. It happened shortly before 8 o'clock last night. Witnesses say she'd been walking with friends. She was hit by a 19-year-old female driver who did stop. This happened on Fulton's Road, along a section that's poorly lit and where there's no footpath. You don't really see many people walking down there. I mean, it's a pretty secluded stretch of road. I mean, maybe some people walking home from the pub, but not many people live this side of Baxter. Witnesses say paramedics were unable to save the girl, leaving her friends at the scene extremely distressed. Police now appealing for more information or dash cam vision to help them determine how this tragedy unfolded. So far, no charges have been laid. Mitch? Emma O'Sullivan at police headquarters. Thank you. A man is facing a string of charges over an alleged sexual assault at Broadmeadows. 20-year-old Murat Belchioglu is charged with rape, false imprisonment and making threats to kill. Police say he was arrested after a woman was sexually and physically assaulted on Monday evening. Anthony Albanese has blasted the coalition over aged care, accusing it of leaving the critical sector in a shambles. Both leaders are mounting character assassinations as they prepare to go head to head in a crucial first debate. Determined not to let this opportunity pass him by, Anthony Albanese insists he will do his best. Thank you for what you do. Thanks for what you do. Thank you for what you do, mate. As Scott Morrison spends a morning in South Australia... Where are you from, Mr? Uh, Afghanistan. Oh, sorry, I meant in Adelaide. But yeah. <laughs> After a slow start, the Labor leader rediscovering his passion, returning to the centrepiece of his budget reply, aged care claiming the neglect exposed by the Royal Commission remains. They have people who are living in their own soil, unable to be changed for days. Claiming staff are overworked, underpaid and leaving in their droves. Residents left without adequate care or food. They're literally starving. There is a crisis in this country and that's what this election is about. Labor lies in campaigns. They try and scare people. At a defence components manufacturer... Yeah. We're away. Mr Morrison rejecting Labor claims that reintroducing his once defeated workplace reforms is an attempt to remove the better off overall test or boot which ensures workers aren't left worse off. There are no major changes to the boot at all. Even on the Greenfields program, I mean, this is something Bill Shorten supported and Anthony Albanese can't. The only way that you want to get rid of the better off overall test is if you don't want people to be better off overall. It's pretty simple. One of the many issues likely to figure in tonight's first leaders debate. Debates in themselves don't determine the outcome of elections, but a poor performance can really play with a leader's head. What Anthony Albanese will be hoping for tonight is a much needed boost in confidence. The Prime Minister says he wants a civil discussion. I'm going to be talking about our plans. I'm going to be talking about what we've been doing. I'm very optimistic about the future for Australia. 
while Anthony Albanese signals a more personal approach. This election is about whether we have a government that looks after people or whether we have Scott Morrison who goes missing. The debate in Brisbane, Queensland always a key battleground state. But Mr Albanese's decided to have his campaign launch in another, Western Australia. Evidence he thinks that's where this election could be won say good luck. <laughs> and lost. And political editor Mark Riley is in Brisbane ahead of tonight's debate. And Mark, the leaders will be trying to use this town hall to build some campaign momentum. Yeah, Mitch, uh, not fall flat on their faces because these debates are remembered in one or two ways, either for the killer line that slays the opponent or the embarrassing gaffe that leaves one of the leaders with egg on their faces. They're generally seen as being better for the opposition leader because they uh, give them the rare opportunity to stand on a stage shoulder to shoulder with the Prime Minister so voters can size them up for the job. Now, Scott Morrison says that he is going to keep it civil tonight. I very much doubt that Anthony Albanese is. I think he will be going after the Prime Minister's character because he's really the one who needs to build a bit of that campaign momentum. Mitch? Mark Riley in Brisbane. Thank you. China has sealed a deal that could put its troops within striking distance of Australia. It signed a security pact with the Solomon Islands in what's been described as the worst foreign policy mistake since World War II. The Pacific Partnership Australia did not want to see confirmed today. Let me assure the people of Solomon Islands that we entered into an arrangement with China with our eyes wide open. The Solomons signing a deal putting a Chinese presence directly in Australia's Pacific backyard, just 1,700 kilometres from Cairns and in the middle of critical shipping lanes. This represents the worst failure for Australian foreign policy in the Pacific since the end of World War II. The Prime Minister denies any failure. Uh, no, no, absolutely not. But admits the government is deeply disappointed. Australia is being coerced by China because of the strong stand that our government has taken. The Deputy Prime Minister even warning it could become Australia's little Cuba, a reference to the Cuban Missile Crisis when Soviet Russia shipped nuclear missiles off the US coast. We see no need for this agreement. We're concerned about the militarisation of the Pacific. So just months after Australia signed a deal for nuclear submarines that can creep right up to China's coastline, China has now crept right up to ours. And the timing couldn't be any more significant, coming right in the middle of the federal election campaign. And while the Solomons insist there'll be no military base, experts say it's just a matter of time. And what that means is for the first time since 1942, Australia's eastern seaboard would be open to direct attack. And from China, accusations it's Australia that's ramping up tensions <laughs> and launching a cold war in the heat of the South Pacific. Chris Reason, 7 News. Back home, a truck has rolled, causing traffic chaos on the Hume Freeway. It was merging onto the ring road near Thomastown when it overturned, bringing cars to a standstill for an hour before the freeway was cleared. The male driver in his 30s was taken to hospital with minor injuries. A Victorian family has been forced to sleep on luggage carousels after their flight home from Launceston was cancelled due to fog. The family says it was notified by Jetstar at 10.30 last night, too late to book accommodation. But the way they told us that it was cancelled was to say, your flight has been cancelled, you need to pick up your luggage and leave and go home. I know they're under pressure at the moment, but I don't think there's any excuse for treating people that way. To make matters worse, they were forced to book emergency seats, costing extra. Jetstar will now issue a credit voucher. Russia has seized a frontline town in eastern Ukraine as the second phase of its war intensifies. Vladimir Putin's forces appear to be changing strategy and denying pleas for a humanitarian ceasefire. In east Ukraine, the sounds of a new wave of war, of human suffering now underway. A bomb falls in residential Kharkiv. 
as missiles rain down along the 480 kilometre front line of the Donbass region, expanding control there, now Russia's main goal. Another stage of this operation is beginning uh, and I'm sure this will be uh, a very important moment of this entire special operation. One now changing strategy. Visibly smaller Russian units are seen pushing into towns, backed by more air support. Putin's troops have already declared one early victory in the Battle of Donbass, taking the frontline town of Kremena in the Luhansk region and moving to take a decisive victory in Mariupol. Ukraine's defence there, Ukraine's president says, is as tough as it gets. Vladimir Zelensky told his country if he had all the weapons he needed, this war would already be over. Calling Putin's army barbaric, inhuman, a source of absolute evil. NATO countries vow more help is coming, including 18 US howitzers. It's really uh, very, very soon, matter, matter, of, uh, matter of days here. Thousands in the path of this new campaign fear they don't have days. Here, a blind Ukrainian woman is asking a soldier to help close her front door, to keep the cold out. She doesn't realise her home's been obliterated by a missile. Having to tell her leaves him in tears. But at the UN, Russia rejected new calls for a ceasefire to allow civilian evacuations. It claims that would only give Ukrainian fighters time. They didn't allow this for 50 days. Why should they allow this now? Despite the destruction inflicted on their cities, here in Kharkiv there are efforts to keep up appearances. New plantings perhaps offering new hope of a life after the war. While they're digging up over there, they're covering up here, trying to protect their national symbols. There used to be a statue of Lenin there. Now it's a symbol of Ukrainian independence. Because this is now life in Ukraine, dodging missiles in the street where no one Seems out of Putin's reach. In Kharkiv, Jeff Parry, 7 News. Former Australian cricketer Ryan Campbell has woken briefly from a coma with hopes growing that he'll make a full recovery. The 50-year-old was rushed to a UK hospital after suffering a major heart attack on Saturday. He remains in intensive care while doctors work on the cause of his heart issues. Soccer giants Brazil and Argentina are bound for Melbourne for an international friendly at the MCG on June the 11th. Superstars Lionel Messi and Neymar are set to go head to head with tickets going on sale tomorrow. 95,000 turned out last time the two nations played at the G in 2017. They're expecting almost as big a crowd on Anzac Day. Tim Watson, it's all on the line for the Bombers. Uh, Mitch, the good news is Essendon captain Dyson Heppel is keeping the faith. Coming up, why he's banking on recent history to help the Bombers turn their fortunes around. We've also gone one-on-one -on -one with Trent Cochin for the latest on Dustin Martin's playing future. And there's breaking injury news too on one of the game's greats. Mitch, I'll see you again soon. OK, Tim, thanks very much. A top Victorian charity has been caught in a political crossfire. Next on 7 News, why the guide dog's boss is under fire. Also ahead, a house fire emergency in Melbourne's east. Johnny Depp takes the stand in his blockbuster court battle. Get us to the Greek treasures at the Melbourne Museum, a sneak preview. And later, the Melbourne couple promising to cut colouring costs by hundreds of dollars. Dozens of firefighters were called to a house fire in Canterbury this morning. No one was inside the multi-million dollar property at the time and fire crews stopped the flames from spreading to neighbouring properties. Solar panels on the roof were badly damaged. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. A Melbourne charity has been caught up in the crossfire of the federal election. Estelle Greepink has the details and Estelle, it's a problem for Guide Dogs Victoria. 
Well, Mitch, it's run into trouble after its CEO went public with her support for Federal Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, and that's despite charities and non-for-profit groups being warned they risk disqualification if they're seen to promote or endorse political parties. Guide Dogs Victoria has now launched an investigation after discovering its CEO, Karen Hayes, features in a flyer that supports the re-election of the Kuyong MP. In a statement, Guide Dogs Victoria's board said it was committed to being an apolitical organisation, that it didn't have any prior knowledge of the material and that it doesn't endorse it. But Mr Frydenberg has dismissed concerns. His fake independence and their confected outrage is all about point scoring when this is a proof point of what I've been delivering for my local community. And Mitch, the Guide Dogs Victoria board has also requested that these flyers are scrapped immediately. Mitch? A still griping cat Q. Thank you. Actor Johnny Depp has taken centre stage in his court drama against his ex-wife, telling a jury he's never hit a woman. The Hollywood star is giving evidence in his blockbuster legal battle with former wife Amber Heard. Centre stage for Johnny Depp, a Virginia court. Your Honour, we call Mr John C. Depp. A long way from the rapid-fire one-liners of Captain Jack Sparrow. This is the day that you will always remember as the day that you... The role he lost after ex-wife Amber Heard wrote a 2018 opinion piece as a victim of domestic violence. Her article did not name Depp. Good afternoon. The 58-year-old says it didn't need to. One day you're uh, Cinderella, so to speak, and then in 0.6 seconds you're Quasimodo. So he's suing for almost $70 million. She's countersuing for twice as much. Today, Depp repeatedly told jurors he was never violent with Amber Heard. Nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman um, in my life. She was loving, um, she was smart. But Johnny Depp claims Amber Heard changed and calls her accusations heinous and untrue. A Hollywood love story rerun in court. In the United States, Tim Lester, 7 News. Never before seen, ancient Greek artefacts are on display at the Melbourne Museum. The rare collection is on loan from the National Archaeology Exhibition in Athens. One of the items includes a 400 kilogram sculpture of the Greek god Zeus. For us, they have selected 44 objects that tell significant stories that span about 4,000 to a 5,000 year time frame. Other items include a marble sphinx and the great Heracles. The exhibition opens to the public on Saturday. Jane Bunn joins us now. And Jane, it certainly was chilly this morning. <laughs> Mitch, yesterday was our coldest day in five months. This morning was our coldest since then too. The city dropped one lower than expected down to nine. That's our first single digit of the year. Much of the day was 16 or 17, but it briefly reached 19.9 in a sunny break. Now, this is what it should look like tomorrow. Grey skies, even a bit of drizzle. But sunshine returns from Friday and the weekend. Well, it's not heat like recently, it is looking pretty nice. The full details are after Sport Mitch. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Jane. Family budgets are taking a hit as prices soar. Next on 7 News, the bottom line on meat and the rising cost of a cup of coffee. Also, how Melbourne is rallying to help a mum fighting for life after a barley nightmare. The new test promising to find skin cancers faster than ever before. And a 50,000 kilometre journey to celebrate a lasting legacy. A motorcyclist is fighting for life after a crash at Moorabbin. Police say a car was turning at Warrigal Road just after 6.30 this morning when it hit another vehicle and a motorbike. The rider suffered critical injuries and was taken to hospital.
Melbourne has rallied to raise more than $120,000 for the family of a Geelong mother critically injured in Bali. Peter Richards remains in an induced coma after she was knocked from her scooter. The nurse had life-saving surgery in Bali before she was flown home to the Alfred Hospital. The price of beef has skyrocketed and is expected to stay high for the rest of the year. Coffee lovers are also being hit in the hip pocket as cost of living pressures soar. The major supermarkets are keen to boost their climate credentials, a carbon neutral range of beef from Coles. There's no difference in, in price and it's uh, really good quality. While Woolworths says it's using 75% less plastic as customers look to help the environment and their bottom line. The price of red meat has soared over the past year. Beef is up more than 8% in the past 12 months. Red meat prices are expected to stay high for the rest of 2022. We're seeing costs increase right across the supply chain from uh, obviously labour costs are going up, uh, raw material costs are going up. It's not only meat prices on the rise, the average cup of coffee is forecast to hit $6 by the end of the year. A drought in Brazil causing coffee bean production to plunge. Coffee shop owners already feeling the pinch. It has been a huge increase across the board, over 40%. And we've had to pass on that price increase to customers, unfortunately. Some cafe owners are doing their best to absorb the higher cost without charging more. We haven't increased our prices at the moment because we're still looking after our loyal local customers. Eventually it will go up. Ellie Wicks, 7 News. A new device being developed in Melbourne could revolutionise the way skin cancers are diagnosed. It's instant, similar to a pinprick test and almost pain-free. Blink. And you'll miss it, but this small device could change the way skin cancer is diagnosed. To have a skin biopsy where you don't need local anaesthesia, where you don't need a future, and which opens really the door uh, for molecular testing. It takes a tissue sample so small you can't see it with the naked eye, 0.25 millimetres. Conventional biopsies are 10 to 20 times larger. Do you see a tiny, tiny... Piece of, yeah. A Queensland invention developed in Melbourne, now grabbing the attention of cosmetic and dermatology companies around the world. There's a lot of interest from researchers worldwide on, on, on this actually simple technology. That could improve early detection. Every day last year, 46 Australians were diagnosed with melanoma. Jessica Stafford was 37 when she found out she was sick. The good news was it was early stage. The bad news was it was melanoma. I was in the uh, surgery two days later. The device has the potential to diagnose inflammatory skin conditions too, like eczema and psoriasis. The next step, bedside pathology results. And within a couple of minutes, you, you have basically the specific result. That technology could take five to ten years. Georgie Chumley, 7 News. Prince Harry has revealed details about his recent meeting with the Queen, telling American network NBC she was in great form. Harry visited Windsor with wife Meghan on his way to the Invictus Games. Been with her, it was great. It was, it was just so nice to see her. You know, she's on, she's on great form. We always, she's always got a great sense of humour uh, with me and I'm just making sure that she's, you know, protected and got the, the right people around well, her. You... It's the couple's first time seeing the Queen in two years. One of Australia's oldest charities is set to mark its centenary with an extraordinary journey. Legacy will stage the world's longest torch relay, spanning more than 50,000 kilometres. The lighting of the torch, a symbol of sacrifice and of legacy, the charity which for almost a century has supported the families of those who gave their life or health for their country. They stepped in at a time when I didn't really know who to turn to and what to do. They just supported us completely. It began with a soldier's promise to his dying mate to look after his family. Legatee Joyce Quinn's husband fought in World War II. I haven't asked Legacy for much help, but they've always been there. Founded by Stan Walker's grandfather, next year marks the charity's centenary. He'd be very, very touched 
but by the same token, you say, oh, come on, let's get on with it. And getting on with it, they are embarking on a 55,000 kilometre torch relay starting Anzac Day next year. 1,500 torchbearers will carry the flame and a hope of raising $10 million. First stop, France, where the original promise was made. From there, the torch will journey to London, then on to Australia, where it will tour all 45 legacy clubs. The journey ending here in Melbourne, the charity's birthplace which I think is um, the longest torch relay in the world, so we're beating the Olympics. A hero effort for these hero families and ones who rely on an enduring legacy. They'll be here for 100 years to come. Sonny Marinelli, 7 News. Victorians are paying a high price for scams. Next, millions gone. The new cons catching us out. Also coming up on 7 News, why thousands are switching off Netflix and cutting the cost of a colour. How to save time and money getting your hair done. We're being warned to do our research before investing in cryptocurrency after Australians lost almost $100 million to scams last year. Crypto is fashionable, it's interesting, but it's also very complicated. People know that they can make a lot of money in crypto, but they also find it hard to navigate the complex crypto world. And that, that leaves them wide open. Victoria Police has established a cyber crime division to help tackle the threat of online scams. The value of Netflix has plunged $54 million as the streaming giant sheds customers for the first time in a decade. 200,000 viewers have cancelled their subscriptions, with 2 million more set to follow. Netflix blames password sharing and growing competition for the drop-off. The company will now consider a lower-priced version of its service, but with ads. The value of the Australian dollar is looking up. Here's Network Finance Editor Gemma Acton. Thanks, Peter. Well, the ASX 200 couldn't hold on to its early gains today, closing up just four points at 7,569. Now, that's despite shares in Ramsey Healthcare soaring by 24% after a takeover offer from US private equity giant KKR. The Aussie dollar has clawed its way back above 74 US cents, while gold prices have pulled back further after approaching 2,000 US dollars earlier this week. And consumer confidence has hit a six-week high. Sentiment is still well below its long-run average, but has been helped by time off for families over the Easter long weekend and recent falls in the price of petrol. Gemma Acton reporting. A thief has run off with a $36,000 necklace from a jewellery store at Werribee. The man entered the shopping centre store two weeks ago asking to view the nine carat gold necklace. He then walked out of the store with the necklace without paying. A Melbourne couple is promising to save women hundreds on the cost of colouring their hair. The DIY solution is delivered straight to your door and promises a salon quality finish at a supermarket price. Kim Yuzon is a natural brown but prefers copper red and that's no mean feat. I have to sit there for two hours, drive home, etc, etc. So it's a big commitment, not to mention the cost. I just can't do that. Now she's doing something different, a dye delivery service. $25 to do my hair every month rather than $350 or $250. The product is an Australian first, claiming to offer a salon quality finish in one hour with video how-to guides. We also include um, a lot of botanicals like um, argan oil, uh, aloe vera, ginseng to uh, really help condition the hair. Three out of four Australian women over 35 dye their hair, many using supermarket fixes to save money. Rather than going to a salon, paying all that money, all that time, or getting the um, supermarket boxes with their outdated ingredients. But industry leaders warn there are risks involved in DIY dyeing and mistakes can be expensive and timely to fix. They say an in-person consultation is essential to check the texture and moisture of your hair. Within seconds they can understand the the, the, the condition of the scalp, the texture of the hair, the porosity. Expectation versus reality has to be uh, a balance. Angelique Opie, 7 News.
I might go for Superman Black. Tim Watson's <laughs> next with Sport. And, Tim, there's breaking injury news involving one of the stars of the AFL. There is, Mitch, and we're live with the exclusive details next. Also coming up, Trent Cochin gives us the very latest on Dustin Martin's future. Why the Bombers are banking on recent history to turn their fortunes around. An emotional tribute to Ronaldo before Liverpool ran riot in the Premier League. And Chard's play as the NBA playoffs heat up. Welcome back. We begin with breaking news from Geelong. Let's head straight to Chief Football Reporter Tom Brown with the exclusive details. And Tom, you can reveal why Patrick Dangerfield's form has dropped off so sharply. Tim Catstar, Patrick Dangerfield is struggling with a corked calf. It explains the best on ground performance in round one, then fewer than 20 touches in three of the last four games. Chris Scott was coy on the exact injury post-game Monday, but did reveal Dangerfield's been given licence to manage his injury through games. If you want to read from that, that he's choosing to be out of kind of the action a little bit more, you know, for his own reasons, then that, that, that you know, I think that's a, a reasonable assessment to make. Tim, I can reveal Hawk star Mitch Lewis has suffered perhaps the most unlucky injury this year. The star booted the winning goal Monday. He'll miss at least the next two weeks with a hamstring strain. Word amongst Hawk sources, he sent the ball into the second level of the stand that's when he tweaked. It's terrible luck. Earlier today, I spoke with Trent Cochin one-on-one. The triple premiership Tiger thinks Richmond is still a chance for the flag. I think the game that we're playing, that's going to give us the chance to, to win more games often than not. But lifting the cup will be almost impossible without their biggest star, Dustin Martin, who remains on personal leave. Yeah, yeah we've spoken via text. Martin didn't indicate if and when he'll return. Not so much, it's more just from a supportive angle and that he's chugging along OK. Martin spent the last month in Sydney visiting family. A persistent question in footy, whether he'll seek a trade to the Swans or Giants for the remaining part of his career. It's an interesting question. I mean, I haven't ever had those sort of conversations with Dusty. Um, he's a very loyal person, uh, so I'd be shocked to see that be the scenario. Um, and at the moment, all, all we wish for him is to, to, to get better and, and feel healthy and happy and um, you know, get back to the club as soon as he possibly can. A return for Martin this weekend unlikely. Seven News understands he still needs to visit New Zealand to attend to his dad's personal business. Cochin also addressing that kick. The MRO found it was intentional, fining him $2,000. Yeah, I think as I rolled, I, I was trying to protect myself. And I know that Tex has come out and made, made comments. He's entitled to his own opinion. To be honest with you, um, standing here today, I've got bigger things to, to, to worry about than a comment around an action that happened on Saturday's game. Cochin teaming up with Ash Barty promoting Posse Schools, a primary school initiative supporting mental health across Australia. And Tim, just finally, the AFL is sitting on a report that's so secret, clubs don't get a copy. Club presidents must come into AFL House to read it and take their own notes. It was commissioned by the Commission on their governance and performance. Several clubs I've spoken to still think the Commission needs more footy experience. Tim? Thanks, Tom. And the Bombers are banking on recent history to turn their horror start to the season around. Dyson Heppel says he's optimistic Essendon can still make a finals run, starting with a win over Collingwood on Anzac Day. The biggest home and away game of the season has even more at stake this year as the Bombers fight to save their season. You, know, you, you take things to heart at times, but uh, internally you've got to try and steady the ship. We try and stand for a real just blue-collar, hard-working team. That's the foundation of what Essendon within itself was built off. A loss on Anzac Day will spell Essendon's worst start to a year since 2016. I've no doubt it, it won't take a month, six-week period. We can turn that around really quickly. You still play finals in one four. Yeah, I've no doubt we can. I'm pretty sure we are pretty similar position last year leading into Anzac Day, so uh, managed to make the eight. Fierce rival Collingwood with little sympathy for the one and four Bombers. We're expecting them to bring their best and they'll be expecting the same from us. It's near impossible to give more than 100%, but somehow on this day I feel like everyone, everyone does. And... The MCC is expecting 83,000 fans on Monday, the biggest AFL crowd since the 2019 Grand Final. At the Bulldogs, they're rallying around Lockie Hunter, who stepped away from the game for personal reasons. He's OK, but he knows that you know, in the immediate future he's got to... Uh, work through a few things and, and I, I believe we'll have him back before the end of the year. 
Luke Beveridge feels recent budget cuts are making it harder for clubs to support players in need. I've lost five coaches in two years because we couldn't give them any guarantees about um, their contracts. Luke Schneider, 7 News. Liverpool is back on top of the Premier League after thrashing Man United 4-0. Diaz, that's it. Mane, oh that's glorious. Salah, that's beautiful. Oh, that is gorgeous. Ronaldo didn't play, staying with family after the death of his newborn son. Aussie all-rounder Marcus Stoinis lost his cool in the Indian Premier League. There's fuming, you can see it. He's absolutely livid. Stoinis fell victim to fellow Aussie Josh Hazelwood, who took four for 25 in Bangalore's win over Lucknow. And it was child's play early on for Phoenix in the NBA playoffs. Devin Booker made this young lad's day, but it ended in tears for the hometown Suns. They lost to New Orleans with the series now tied 1-1. And Mitch Wimbledon are expected to ban players from Russia and Belarus from competing later this year, and that would force Daniel Medvedev out of the tournament, although he remains entered for the French Open. Rather a political move, that one. One would think so. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Tim. Jane is next with the forecast. And, Jane, what's on the way tomorrow? Oh, Mitch, uh, we have grey skies. There's even a bit of drizzle. But the pleasant weather isn't over. That returns on Friday. The details are next. Tonight on the latest from 7 News, the stage is set for the First Leaders debate and we'll have analysis of all the big moments. I'll be joined by some of our Invictus athletes from the Netherlands and we'll tell you how the way we watch Netflix is about to change. Join me for those stories in every breaking development on the latest. Hello again. We had showers passing through today and the morning turned quite grey as they approached. And the odd sunny break this afternoon let it rise to almost 20. There were showers passing through, so very different to yesterday's persistent rain. Today, hit and miss activity, so dry for much of the time. Now there are only about the outskirts of Melbourne and a few suburbs just reached 20 degrees today, but Torquay, Hastings and Frankston were only 18. The wind certainly has a bit of bite. The persistent rain cleared the far east of the state by dawn. Today had cloud come up from the southwest that was pushed in on a cold front. There are showers under that cloud and it is stretching up through the north of the state, but not reaching East Gippsland where it's been quite a sunny day in the low 20s. Bendigo only four this morning and Mount Buller was just one. This map shows exactly where the recent rain fell. Now, last time it was East Gippsland that was flooded. They missed out this time, along with the far southwest, as expected. The heaviest falls are shown in yellow. All those areas recorded more than 20 millimetres. And the orange areas in through here, more than 50 millimetres. That rain was caused by a slow-moving trough with tropical moisture. All of that is now well out to sea here. The cold front here has no tropical moisture, so it doesn't do much. We have high pressure that is ridging in, but La Nina still going strong, and whenever there's a trough or low tapping into that moisture, it rains. Now, for the next few days, that is over these northern parts of Queensland here. Some of that rain could be spreading through the interior over the weekend. It could make it down to us next week. Around the nation tomorrow, Cairns expecting 30 to 70 millimetres of rain. Sydney back into showery weather thanks to onshore winds. In Hobart, it is gusty. It is cold enough for snow up on the mountain, but all the wet weather eases during the morning. To Victoria, it's cool out there, cloudy in the south all day. Morning drizzle, uh, drizzly showers will clear out during the afternoon. That's as the cloud spreads across the northwest, but it remains dry underneath. The northeast looks sunny all day in that pocket there after early fog. Winds are moderate southwest to southeasterly. Closer in, patches of drizzle in the morning that'll clear to a dry afternoon, but the cloud remains all of that white there. Thursday does look quite grey, but you still need sun protection between a 
about 10.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. The city has a top of only 17. Grey skies all day, that's patchy drizzle in the morning. To the eight-day outlook, a cold night's return. They'll stick with us right through to Monday morning, nine in the city, colder in the outer suburbs. But that means the days are quite pleasant. We're 18, then 19 across the weekend. That's Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Bit of foggy, low cloud at first, then bright sunshine. Cloud returns later on Tuesday as we go back up into the 20s. There could be a bit of light rain around here, mainly northern Victoria. Great tomorrow. There may be patches of drizzle during the morning. Cold nights and pleasant days return after that. Mitch. Classic late autumn, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, Jane. And here's what's on Sunrise tomorrow. Thanks, Mitch. Tomorrow on Sunrise, fake calls claiming to be your service provider, your bank and so many others. Yeah, the new tricks scammers are using to catch you out and how you can stop them. See you in the morning, Melbourne. And that's the way it is this Wednesday, the 20th of April. Thanks for your company. For now, from the Seven News team, good night.